Hello, I'm Jeff Troxell and I teach guitar in the Jazz Studies Department at the University of Montana. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about comping rhythms for guitar, and specifically comping rhythms with a swing feel. So before we get started, I want to do a really fast review of a couple of shell voicings that I'm going to be using. They're just simple chord voicings to demonstrate the concepts. We have a more in-depth video on this topic that you can access and we'll provide a link for that. But for, the, for today, what I'm going to use is a dominant seventh chord based on a note B flat, starting here at the sixth fret. And I'm gonna put my second finger on the fourth string sixth fret. And I'm gonna put my pinky on the third string seventh fret. And I'm going to, with my right hand, I'm gonna play thumb, index, and middle finger on those three notes respectively. And I get that sound. And then if I move the uh, first finger off, I have this configuration of my second and fourth finger. I'm going to slide those together down one fret and I'm going to add my third finger on the fifth string. That would be for an E flat dominant seventh chord. So the first thing you might want to do is to get comfortable with <clears throat> these two chords would just be to practice changing back and forth until you can make that change pretty smoothly. And then finally if I take that same this is a tritone interval right here between my second finger and fourth finger. If I move it up one fret and add my third finger again on the fifth string, I get an F7 chord. So in a blues situation, this B flat would be the one chord, the E flat would be the four chord, and F would be the five chord. And back to one. So we're gonna learn a rhythm called the Charleston rhythm. And I'm gonna break it down into three parts. So the first part is just simply feeling the backbeat, the beats on two and four in a measure of four, four time. And here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come in percussively. I'm gonna have the fingers on the chord in the left hand, but not pushing, just off the strings. And then I'm, my thumb's gonna come in from just a little ways out and it's gonna hit the sixth string, like that. My index finger's gonna come in and it's gonna hit the fourth string with the thumb and then my middle finger is going to come in and it's going to hit the third string like this. So I want these fingers, they don't have to come from a long distance out and they don't have to hit hard. So just enough to make a little tapping sound. One, two, three, four. So now I'm feeling two and four in a measure, like a drummer's hi-hat. So this is step one. And if you had a metronome set up to play quarter notes like this, then you could get used to playing that two and four with that metronome. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, step two now is I'm going to add an attack on beat one of the measure. And so to do that, at, this, at the time I attack, I'm gonna feel time in both my left hand and my right hand. So on beat one, I'm gonna push in so that I get notes like this, one, and then as I come in on, on my tap on beat two, I'm gonna release the pressure in the left hand. So it's like this. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, now, that's step two, and finally step three is that I'm going to add an attack on the and of two. So I'm gonna have, I have one, two, and four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and four. I want you to notice that the sound that comes in on the and of two isn't a long chord. I'm making it short, but I'm not making it short by jumping in with my right hand to kill the strings like this. I'm making it short by lifting off the pressure with the left hand like this. So that way you can keep the right hand in time without having to jump in between things to stop the sound quickly. So I have this sound and if you watch both hands together it's one, two, ready.
that's the Charleston. Notice that to really feel that groove right, it's not only where I attack, but where I release. So everything is important to the feel of the groove. And it also is important how I divide, <clears throat> excuse me, how I divide the beat. So if I divide the beat in exactly into half, I have a straight rhythm, which is not a swing rhythm. So if, if I'm feeling the division of the beat as one and two and three and four and, and I play it like the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. This becomes a real stiff feeling groove. I want to relax it more into a triplet division of the beat. So one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a. Now finally, I don't really want to hear this when I'm playing the groove, but I want to feel this. I want to feel this. So it's probably a good idea when you're first learning to play this groove for you to go ahead and play it loud enough that you can hear it. But as you get more comfortable with it, then I think you're going to want to pull back a little bit from that and definitely feel it, but don't, don't make that sound come out. So now I have the Charleston at one, two, three, four. So you're not hearing that so much, but I'm feeling it. That's the important thing. And every once in a while, you can separate the thumb from the two fingers and get this kind of a sound. anticipates just a little and then the two fingers play like that. So let's take this Charleston groove now through a 12 bar blues in the key of B flat. One, two, a oh, one, two, three, four. It is 12 bar blues through the uh, with the Charleston uh, using that uh, back beat on two and four and uh, trying not to overdo it with the percussive effects. Now if I'm playing with a bass player or if I'm playing with a piano player and I don't want that big of a sound I can always get rid of the bass note and I can do that by just playing these two fingers on these two strings. I just have these little tritone shapes that I'm moving through the blues like this. And I could still finger this chord if I want to, but I just don't play it with the thumb. So it would sound like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. By the same token, I can use a pick if I want to strum this sound. I just have to be really careful with these little shell voicings to make sure I deaden all of the notes that I'm not using. <clears throat> so when I'm playing this B flat 7 chord, my first finger is really going to deaden everything but the note that I'm playing is the root, like this. All those notes are dead except the root. And then these two notes of the chord are in front of the dead note so that it won't affect them. So it sounds like this. same token when I play that E flat 7 I'm going to deaden everything behind it by just laying this first finger flat on the strings like this and that the dead notes actually add to the percussive effect of the strum so it becomes not only the sound of the chord but the sound of the percussion which is one of the things that made Freddie Green's style when he played with the Basie Big Band made it so effective that you could hear not just the chords coming through, but the brushing effect of the pick going through some of the dead strings along with the fretted notes. So the 12 bar blues uh, with a strum would be like this. One, two, a oh, one, two, three, four.
that's the sound that your band director is going to want to hear when you're playing an old swing style blues as opposed to these rock and roll <laughs> heavy chords. We want these more subtle sounding chords like that. Uh, I will point out that even though I'm using a strum, you'll notice I'm still feeling time in my right hand. Uh, with I'm not smacking the strings like I was with the finger style, but I'm playing one, and then I kind of do a ghost strum on beat two. One, two. And I'm also coming in with my hand on beat four. See that? One, ghost strum, two, and then four. So by feeling the time and the, <clears throat> the division of the beat with the right hand, it allows me to really lock in that groove. And if you practice this with a metronome so that your, your back beats are locked up exactly with the beats on the metronome, it's really going to make you a strong rhythm player. Let's do a few variations on the rhythm now because if all we do is the Charleston rhythm all the time, it's going to get a little bit tiresome. So I'm including a few other rhythms along with the Charleston that you can use to vary things a little bit. And I recommend that you learn them, maybe through a 12 bar blues would be a way to do it. And I'd recommend that you learn them one at a time all the way through the blues and then start to mix them up a little bit. So here's a rhythm where I'm attacking on beat one and I'm holding it through beat two, three, four, and then attacking again on the end of four. So it's like this, a one, two, three, four. If I play all the way through a 12 bar blues using that rhythm, one, two, a one, two, three, four. Or number two, I'm playing on beat one, then I'm playing on beat three and an and a four. So all that's different here is I'm adding an attack on beat three. So it sounds like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Another example would be to, to take the and of four and make it a short note. And I won't go all the way through the blues with this, but it sounds like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Another example would be to take that same rhythm I just played and anticipate the beat three. So I'd have, here's the quarter note, I'd have one, and, and. Before I was playing one, three, and. Now I'm going to play one, and, and, two, three, four. that you could use also in um, number, this one number five that I've got in here is it comes in on the and of one. So I have one and three. Like this. One, two, a one, two, three, four, one. I could do it would be to attack on one and three and one, two, a one, two, three, four. And that'd be a little busy to do all the way through a blues, but it would be a nice thing to throw in once in a while. Uh, number seven, I've got one that's just the and of two only. One, two, a one, two, three, four, one. Et 
etc. And you, do, you feel, do you see how I'm really, even though we don't have a metronome going, how you can watch my right hand and you can see I'm always counting and feeling time with this right hand even when I'm, even when I'm resting. It's always kind of doing something to help me sort of mark time. That can all fall away eventually, but while you're first learning how to really groove, it's a good idea to use that right hand as your own personal metronome to help lock in with what the drummer and the bass player are doing. And finally, there's an example where I have the and of two and the and of four. And I'm gonna make this into a two bar example or it just gets too busy. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. lot of possibilities out there for rhythms that you can comp and ways that you can play them. But what really what you're going to do, I would, I would say that you should take some of these rhythms and try to work with just one rhythm at a time and make sure that you can really lock it in with a groove. And once you feel comfortable with several of them, then it's time to start mixing them together a little bit. And ultimately our goal is to play more intuitively, uh, to be responding to what other people are doing in the band and to try to complement what they're doing and make it more organic. So this is sort of a means to an end in you know, mastering a few rhythms first, but eventually we want to just be able to pull them out of the tool bag and use them at will. So here's a 12 bar blues with the shell voicings where I'm just going to play more intuitively against an imaginary singer, horn player, uh, soloist, something going on in my head and uh, just try to respond in the moment. One, two, a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So there you have it. There's some rhythms for you to play, some uh, shell voicings with that uh, basis of the Charleston, and then some variations on the Charleston. And uh, these are some things that you can think about as you're developing your own personal comping style. Good luck. <laughs>